Shall we have another Susie and the Banshees classic with some excellent guitar work from John McGeoch? Why not, I say. And this video is going to be the first of what I hope will be two Christmas specials this year because this particular track is a Christmas song. That's not something I really picked up on until recently, although it's actually blindingly obvious when you listen to the lyrics and not to mention the sleigh bells and the Welsh choir. And it was actually released as a Christmas single in 1980. From a guitar point of view, this one contains some excellent McGeoch riffage. So let me get started by playing through the track. Go sleigh bells. <laughs> Without any further ado, let me show you how this song is played. Let me take you through this one riff by Mighty Riff then, starting with this great intro chord. And what a great chord that is. It's right up there with the great arpeggiated chords in rock. I think it's almost on the level of this. So, and what we've actually got happening here, we've got a high B, seventh fret on the high E string. Then we've got an open B string. And then we've got a C sharp is the 6th fret on the G string and then an A which is the 7th fret on the D string and we're just arpeggiating that chord shape going from high down to low and then we've got a bit of a variation on the picking pattern we're going from high to low and then back up again a couple of times and what I think we've got here is a type of B minor chord I think the bass is just holding down some B root notes and then we've got an A in there which is the flat 7 we've got a ninth in there as well so I suppose you could describe it as a B minor 9 with no third so let me put all of that together for you
So the basic harmony for the verse is an E minor 7, going down to a C sharp minor 7, and then we've got G and D. And what McGeeck is doing, he's got some more nice arpeggiated stuff and he's got some harmonics in there as well. So for the E minor 7, he's just barring at the 12th fret and playing strings 1, 2, 3, 4. And then for the C sharp minor 7, it's the same thing down at the 9th fret. And then for G, he's just playing a triad, but he's playing it with harmonics. So we've got harmonics at the 12th fret on the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings. And then a similar thing for the D chord, we've got harmonics at the 7th fret. So that's the basic idea in the verse. You can also hear on the record what I think is an overdub, and that's a more distorted, strummed part that goes like this. It's really just a D going up to an E bar chord shape. Uh, so I think that's overdubbed on the record, but when you see McGeeck do it live, he's kind of combining those two parts. So that's what I tried to do in the introduction to this video. So. So for the chorus, again, you can hear multiple guitar tracks on the original recording. And it sounds to me like there's one guitar playing some strummed bar chords and there's another guitar just playing some higher single notes. But what I think you can do is what McGeeck did when he played the track live is you can combine those two parts. So the basic chords that we've got here are E minor and then C. And we're just going back and forth between E minor and C. And then we've got a G and then a D. So I'm just playing all of these as bar chords. Fifth string root E minor, sixth string root C, and then fifth string root G, sixth string root D. And we're going to strum those chords in the first part of the bar. And then on beat three, we're just going to play the high E string. So you get this kind of thing. <laughs> E minor to C, and then we're going to G, and on that final note I think you can hear two guitars in harmony, so you can either play a high D or you could maybe play a high F sharp at the end. So that's about it for the main riffs in the tune, but I just want to talk briefly about this amazing part that you can hear about halfway through the track where McGeeck unleashes this amazing lick. I mean, it's not exactly a guitar solo, it's more of a, an instrumental break, it's more of an atmospheric thing, but it's a, an amazing thing. And on the original recording, almost impossible for me to decipher it. I think there are two guitar tracks each one is playing slightly different stuff. So in the end, what I decided to do was to transcribe it from some live footage. And that made it a little bit clearer exactly what it is he's doing. So I'm not going to take you through every single note here or we're going to be bored rigid, but I have tabbed this out and I'm going to make the tab available for you up on my website. But the basic idea is this. We've got a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs with open strings. So we're starting on the B string and we've got an open B string, hammer at the seventh fret and then pull off to the open B again. And then we're doing the same thing on the high E string. And then we're doing the same thing on the B string, but at the ninth fret. And then we've just got a pull off from nine to open on the high E string. And then we're back onto the B string, open, nine, open. And then we're onto the seventh fret on the high E string. So if I put all of that together, we've got this. And 
then that repeats. And then in the third bar it repeats with some variations and we've got this. So this time we've got a, a G in there instead of an F sharp and we've got this high D in there too. So. And then we're going down to just the seventh fret. And notice that it's the same picking pattern, it's the same rhythm every time, it's just the notes that are changing slightly. So let me put all of that together for you slowly. Let me take you through the gear that I'm using in this video and the setup is actually exactly the same as I was using in my Arabian Nights video that I did a couple of weeks ago. So the guitar is the Eastwood McGeeock 1000 model and they sent me this guitar a few weeks ago and yes it's nice to sometimes get free stuff but quite often I find myself saying no to people because I don't want to be under any kind of obligation to use gear in my videos particularly if it's stuff that I don't really like but in the case of this guitar it's a lovely guitar sounds great and uh, I'm very happy to use it in my videos so that's the guitar the amp is the Marshall Studio Vintage and I'm going into the bottom input of the high treble channel and that's slightly warmer than the top input. The top input can be a little bit harsh, I find. I'm using three pedals. I've got some overdrive from my J Rocket Archer. I've got some delay from a Boss Digital Delay. And of course, I've got my MXR flanger. And once again, I'm just playing around with the knobs that I don't really know what they do until it sounds good to my ears. Let's have some sounds then. This is the guitar just clean, going straight into the amp with no pedals. <laughs> And then if I turn on the flanger, and it's such a good sounding flanger pedal. What I didn't really appreciate until I got this flanger is how versatile they are and how many different sounds you can get. And this pedal can obviously do flanging, but you can also get chorus, you can get vibrato. And this has kind of got a bit of a Leslie speaker sound going on, I think. And then I'm just going to kick on a bit of delay as well set to a kind of medium delay time with two or three repeats. So that was the sound that I was using for the verse and then for the chorus I was just stepping on the overdrive. That's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Since it's Christmas, I'm gonna be putting the tab and the backing track to this one up on my website completely free as a little Christmas gift to you lovely people as thanks for supporting this channel over the past year or so. Thanks very much for watching, I shall see you next time, bye bye.